What's up, people? I'm here again. I am here today, because today I am going to be reviewing... Reviewing Captain America Civil War. And my, my pretty much my thoughts on this movie are, it's a good movie. I would probably say out of the Avengers lineup, like that mean, like including like Iron Man movies, Thor movies, Avengers, Captain America, I would say, I mean, I gotta watch Winter Soldier again, because so far Winter Soldier is probably the best there. <laughs> I just, um, but I think Civil War would definitely be like top two. I think Civil War. It's not the best MCU movie. I still think, for me personally, it's Guardians of the Galaxy. I would still say, is the best MCU movie. So the sto but this movie's really good. I think, to me, it's definitely one of the best movies this year. It's not for me. It's not my favorite comic book movie this year. I would still say, Deadpool is. So the story pretty much is. It's about, and oh yeah, P.S. There's gonna be spoilers. So uh, spoiler alert. So, anyone who has not seen the movie yet, you don't want spoilers, don't watch the video. But anyway, so the story pretty much is, it. the movie begins, starts off with a very big action scene. They're trying to stop Crossbones from stealing a biological weapon, which they managed to do. And then, by, one thing, I really didn't like some of the villains. I honestly think, oh, which I'll get more into the villain later, but... Like, Crossbones, he was kind of wasted here, like, don't get me wrong, his fight scenes was pretty cool, like, it was cool seeing him, like, do some shit, but, the way he gets blown, those gun, those kind of, he gets blown up by, uh, Wanda, cause, she, he was gonna blow himself up, and, <clears throat> and, um, Scarlet Witch used, uh, her powers, to lift him, but he ended. She he ended up blowing up in front of a bunch uh, in, on people, so she killed a few other people. <laughs> so now, the uh, several countries are trying to pass the bill, the Superhero Registration Act, which what which is basically the comic, what the comic's based off of. This movie's not like the comic, which, I mean, I can understand because a lot of people that were in the comic are not, either not in the MCU or. Like, Daredevil, you know, he technically is in the MCU, but he's doing his own thing with the Netflix show. So, yeah, it's not going to be like the comic. I wasn't really expecting it to be like the comic either. So, um, so Steve Rogers is against it. it you know, Cap, Falcon are against the Registration Act. Tony is pro for the Registration Act because he thinks, you know, they, the heroes need to be put in check. And then, the one thing, and the villain is Zemo, which I honestly think you could have kept him out. To be honest with you, it's, I don't even really think you needed a villain. Like, honestly, after Crossbones, you honestly didn't need a villain. You honestly, the story could have just been about the whole Registration Act. Because for me, my problem was, I felt like Zemo, see, Zemo 1 didn't really do anything. Like, yeah, he was the, um... Also, oh, um, well, I'll talk more about Zemo in a second. Let me just kind of get the plot going. So, then, uh, Black Widow is going to be representing the Avengers going to Vienna. Um, there she meets T'Challa and his dad, aka Black Panther, which I'm probably, in my opinion, one of the MVPs of the movie. Him, Spider-Man, I would probably say Winter Soldier, too. Probably some of the highlights of this movie. But, um... And then a bomb went off, and they try to frame Bucky. So... Captain America tries to go to Bucky, tries to, you know, help him get out. <clears throat> then, um, the government attacked him. And then there was, like, that's where they had the big chase scene. Which I thought was very well done. The movie gets right to the action. That's one thing this movie gets really right is it's a pretty much the action is done very well I would say um and um so you learn um 
there they have the big the big chase scene and then um they get arrested promptly it, um and they go to the eight i think of the avengers base um then they take uh bucky to uh, the prison where they he's treated by a therapist which turns out to be zima and i guess he has some book that has the instructions on the oh um, on the um Winter Soldier, which you found out in the beginning of the movie, Winter Soldier killed um, Tony's parents in the beginning of the film. <clears throat> <clears throat> so on um, December 6, 1991, that's said a lot in this movie. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the day Tony's parents died. So then, um, so he breaks, so, uh, Bucky breaks out, and then, you know, so t he's on his switch, so he's attacking everybody, he fought, Cap he took out a Captain America and Falcon, and then fights Tony, Sharon Carter, and then she also fights, yeah, Black Widow, and T'Challa, he tries to escape, and Captain America stops the helicopter from leaving, and it crashes, then they're at, like, a secret location, this is actually the location, if you saw Ant-Man, they showed this in the, um, after credit scene. You, when you see, uh, Bucky, uh, in his talk, in, uh, Cap and Falcon talking. And then that's there, Bucky pretty much explains the whole thing. And then, I really thought, you know, this movie, pacing-wise, was really good. I think this movie's far superior to last year's Age of Ultron. I think this movie pretty much outdid that movie. I think... Because the pacing was really good. The one thing, which I'll, I'll probably talk about some of my gripes, which I'll probably, let me, I just kind of want to talk about the plot first, and then I'll get to, like, my gripes and stuff like that. So, I honestly think that, um, here is where Iron Man is pretty much sent. Iron Man asks, um, the Secretary of State if he can go on a, oh, I also forgot, um, since, uh, after what happened with Scarlet Witch, she's kind of put on lockdown in the, the Avengers base, though she's broke, broke out by Hawkeye, who makes random return, so Tony has 36 hours to try to capture Iron Man and, uh, um, and, and Bucky. So, then he meets Peter, this is where you meet Peter Parker, for the first time, and I ain't gonna lie, I was nerding the fuck out. As soon as, like, when Peter came on screen, and then you just see Tony talking to Aunt May, which, okay, I'll say this right now. Marissa Tomei is not a bad actress or anything, I just don't think she should be Aunt May. Maybe it's just, I don't feel like Aunt May should be attractive. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just, like, it's just weird when I see her on screen, I'm like, she's, like, not old. I always feel like, you honestly could have just got the lady who played Aunt May in the, in the Tommy, in the Sam Raimi films. Even the one in The Amazing Spider-Man was fine. Like, she wasn't too old, but she wasn't young either, but, and I know some people might say to me, well, uh, Martha Kent from, uh, Man of Steel was kind of young, but she not, no, she looks, still looks older. Aunt May in this movie literally only looks like she's in her 40s. She, I think Marissa Tomei's 50, but she literally looks like she's like 40-something. She doesn't, she looks super young. But I just had to get that out. So Tony asks, pretty much asks uh, Peter to join him, so Peter agrees. Then he makes him a new suit. Then uh, we see Cap's team form, which is Captain America, Falcon, Winter Soldier... Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch and now Ant-Man, which I'm gonna be honest, I didn't see Ant-Man last year, but it's pretty much my first time seeing him on screen, and he was, I think Paul Rudd did an okay job as Ant-Man, and then this is where we have the big airport battle, and this scene was really done well, the way Spider-Man comes in and steals the, takes the, the, um, shield like you saw in the trailer, I honestly think the movie was done well. I think this whole fight scene was done well. The way they just alternated, the way you just, you see Spider-Man interact with Captain America, and just, it was so cool. Really cool fight scene. Um, and then Ant-Man becomes Giant-Man. 
um, which was really well done. Then, um, Cap and, uh, and, uh, Winters and Bucky escape, manage to escape. It's because Black Widow ends up, uh, not turning on Team Tone, on Team Iron Man, but kind of, like, she kind of switches sides. Not really switches sides, either, like, um, T'Challa was chasing them, and then she kind of was distracting T'Challa while they escaped. And so, pretty much all of Team Cat pretty much is put under arrest. And there, Tony finally accepts that it wasn't Bucky. So we find out that Zemo manipulated Bucky into... It wasn't Bucky... Well, not manipulated. He framed Bucky for all these attacks. It wasn't Winter Soldier that bombed the UN. It was uh, Baron Zemo. He planned this whole thing out. Tony finally learns about it. And then, uh, Tony gets information from Falcon on, uh, Barnes and, uh, Cap's, uh, whereabouts. And there, they're looking for Zemo, and then Zemo shows up. And Cap, and then this is where Iron Man shows up, and then Iron Man, pretty much seemingly, uh, him and, T uh, Cap get along again. And then they meet Zemo, which is where, this is where Zemo reveals his whole plan. He wanted revenge, Oh, I'm just gonna finish the synopsis before I get to my opinions. Um, and this is where he shows Tony that Winter Soldier was the one that killed Cap's parents, not Cap's parents, Tony's parents, which T Cap knew the whole time. And this is where the fight they fight. So it wasn't like the trailer made it seem like you know they were gonna fight because Tony was looking for him. So, and then Baron Zemo kind of just disappears when they start. Him, it was Iron Man versus Cap and Bucky. Yeah, um, when, um, Zemo just kind of disappears, and then he has a little scene with, uh, Bla oh yeah, with Black Panther. He shows up, and they talk for a second. So yeah, they they fight. The fight the fight scene was really done well. I thought the way you I, you can actually tell the the anger in uh Tony, you know, and then so they fight. Iron Man rips the arm off of Winter Soldier, so, um, so Cap and Tony fight, pretty much Cap wins, like, he pierces Tony's arm and chest, and then he pulls it out, and then, I think he, kind of, him and, uh, Bucky walk off, he drops the shield, and then the movie pretty much ends with Tony saying, well, Cap saying, you can call me anytime. When this whole, they're just, so, pretty much Cap's in hiding, pretty much, him and Bucky are in hiding, because of the whole registration thing, which, which is one thing, it was, was it, pa did it pass, because that's the one thing, it really didn't pass, did it pass, because, yeah, we don't, there's no resolution, I felt like, in that part of the story, and then the after credit scenes, pretty much one, was they put, they, uh, T'Challa, hid, um, was hiding Bucky out in, uh, Wakanda, so yeah, that's kind of what it was, and then the second after credit scene was pretty much, it was a teaser for Spider-Man Homecoming, like, you see, uh, Peter do some stuff, so pretty much that's what this movie is, it, this was just a setup, the, that after credit scene was setting up Spider-Man, but now, um, here are my gripes with the movie, it's a good movie, but I honestly think some of my issues was, one, I felt like the jokes, every, it was almost like everybody, it wasn't as bad as in, in this movie as it was in Age of Ultron, but my god, it got a little ridiculous every time someone was dropping a joke. It kind of takes away the seriousness of the civil, of the fight, the fight scene sometimes. It's like, not everyone needs to be dropping one-liners, like, come on. To Zemo, you could have kept out. I honestly, he didn't do anything. He killed one guy and then was, you know, acted as a, um, as a, like he worked for uh, the Avengers. But it turns out he was a, he was a bad guy and then, you know, released Bucky. And then, then he did the whole reveal in the end and that was, and then he gets arrested. <laughs> Yeah, so, oh yeah, he ends up getting arrested too, so, that's it, 
you honestly, I honestly don't think you needed a villain. You honestly, Crossbones was fine. He could have been the catalyst to start the whole registration acts, you know, them fighting and stuff. You didn't, I felt like Zemo was just kind of thrown in there. Yeah, I honestly feel like Zemo was just kind of thrown in there. Oh, it's because, like, oh, we need a bad guy. He really didn't. You, uh, I would have been fine if it was just... Because you honestly... Those scenes with Zemo, you honestly... You crop those out. You could have done more set up, setting up, you know, maybe more with the whole registration act. Because so that's what the comic was about. And I'm not I'm not complaining that the co movie wasn't like the comic at all. wasn't expecting it. I'm not one of those comic book fans that needs the comic book movie to be, like, exactly like the comic. Um, but, you, it's just my little, little gripe. You didn't, I really didn't feel like you need Zemo in it. And three, I felt like, it felt like a little family squabble, and it's just like, oh, well, we're on the same side because we're friends. It was just, I didn't feel like there was any, like, consequences, you know, or tension, or, like, it just seemed like the reasoning for their fight... Oh, we disagree on this word. Let's fight. Eh. Like, I, I understood... You can understand Cap's reasoning and Tony's reasoning. I understand it, you know. Cap didn't want to do it because, you know, he didn't want to give out his name. And obviously he was trying to protect Bucky. Whereas with Tony, he, he didn't want... He wanted it because... You know, he felt bad and he realized... And he wants the Avengers to take responsibility and be put in check and he says he's I can understand their reasoning but with everyone else it just seemed like oh like with um with uh Rhodey oh who Rhodey ends up getting uh his leg shot because he gets shot out of the sky Vision was trying to shoot at a uh, Falcon and Falcon moved and he ended up hitting Rhodey which I honestly, no one died. I mean, like in the comic, Cap dies. So I understand if you don't want to kill off Captain America yet, that's fine. You honestly could have killed Rhodey off. Because it just seems like he's there. Like in this movie, he was only on Team Iron Man because he's friends with Tony. Like it just seemed like it didn't feel like he had a reason to be on the team. You know, with Wanda, she probably, with not Wanda with um with um scarlet witch her reasoning i can kind of understand too she felt like um team iron man was trying to keep her like locked down and she didn't like that so hawkeye okay, bro broke it up but everyone else's reasoning you don't really get on why they're on their team it just seems like oh we're on teams because they're friends with one, some other per it was just not I wish the sides were more flushed out, but other than that, I mean, it's that's my few little gripes with the movie. I don't have a lot. I honestly think the movie was done well. Good pacing. The score is okay. Like most Marvel movies, it's a decent score. It's not like... Comparing this to Batman v Superman, I know I'm going to get crucified for this, but this is me being objective. It's not me being a DC fanboy. I love Marvel too. So this, I'm not on, I don't do the whole, oh, I'm only, I'm pro DC or I'm pro Marvel, though I like DC slightly better, I'll admit. But being honest, an objective, I personally think Batman v Superman is slightly better. Especially because I came home and I watched Batman v Superman, like, right after, because I kind of wanted to compare. I honestly think Batman v Superman was slightly better, and, I'm, and I'll probably do a video explaining why I think that, but... People are probably not going to agree with me. But, I'll, okay, I'll give some of the reasoning. I feel like BBS just, there was more tension. And there was, I mean, yeah, Superman, you, you know, Superman died. Yeah, he's coming back. But at the same time, at least that was a big, like, moment when he sacrificed himself. And, he, and you know, for the greater good. And they had a funeral and... They had that whole thing. They like you could have honestly killed off Rhodey, like you could have killed off one character, but it just seemed like they were trying to play it safe. And it's like, I like that DC is willing to take that risk. I honestly think, I understand you know they don't want to kill off Captain America, but you could have killed off somebody. 
but, and I mean, it's slightly better. I just feel like BVS and, like, like the reasoning for Batman and Superman fighting to me made more sense compared to Tony and Cap. Because, like, the whole so was I scene when, like, Cap was like, um, you know, he's my friend, and, and Tony was like, so was I. I'm like, they never, to me, ever, at least in the movies, they never gave off that vibe like they're best friends. Maybe I just, I just didn't feel like, I never got that, like, vibe from them. They always seem like, oh, they're just working together. Like, they didn't come off as, like, super best friends. So, it just seems like, yeah, it was just, it just seemed like, that's one thing, it didn't, it just seemed like they wanted to play it safe, and Tony and Cap fighting, it was kind of hollow, whereas with Batman and Superman, Batman, you felt the reasoning, because, you know, he felt like Superman is too dangerous, and is dangerous to the world, is a detriment, so he feels like he needs to destroy him, and take it into his own hands, so I can see the reasoning there. But, at this, but, guys, don't think, like, I like this movie any less. I think this movie, and I only slightly like Batman vs. Superman better. I still think this movie is amazing. amazing. Or, I'll say good. I don't think it's amazing, per se. But it's great. It's definitely one of the better MCU movies, and I'm definitely hyped for Infinity War. And, I mean, I'm hyped, I'm hyped for all these comic book movies. So now I gotta give it a rating. What would I give this out of 10? I gave BBS a 9. I gave Deadpool a 9.5. So I would give this a 8. I'd give it an 8. I'd give it a solid 8. I don't think it's like a 10 out of 10. I don't think any movie's 10 out of 10 or an 8. I think a solid 8's a good rating. I think it's definitely a great movie. Especially if you do love, um, if you like the MC movies, definitely you're going to love this movie. Go see it, you know, if you, especially if you love comic book movies, that's pretty much all I gotta say, I'll, um, I'll probably do a video where I actually f go in depth on why I think Batman v Superman is slightly better, well, I don't know, I don't want to add fuel to the fire, I like both movies, so, there you go, other than that, guys, I'm um, tomorrow, I'll do my jank video, and then, um, yeah, so other than that, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Signing off. Peace.